<clears throat> All right, hello everyone, I'm back. Today we're going to talk about nakshatras some more. I'm going to talk about Uttara, Ashada, and Nakshatra. Um, I, this is part of an ongoing nakshatra course, but I'm not going to do them in order. I'm doing them more uh, based on the insights that I get and the research that I get and doing them in that way. Um, and you know, the nakshatras are ruled by the moon. They're not ruled by the sun. We can contemplate them any way we want to. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to talk about Uttara, Ashada, Nakshatra and you know what it means, what it signifies, and then give some examples. Um, to begin with, Uttara, Ashada, Nakshatra, uh, I might pronounce that one wrong. It's kind of a hard one to pronounce for an English one. I'll, I'll mispronounce it occasionally. Um, it is a star that is, is ruled by the sun. The sun is its planetary emissary, its lord. But again, remember the, the lords of the nakshatras, the planetary lords are not that important. Uh, they're, they're actually given different planetary lords for different vimshatari lists. That's just the order that they go to make vimshatari dasha. There's nothing in any book that says that that planet rules it, and so that planet has a lot to do with it. But you will see that they have a lot to do with it. They have something in common. So I like what uh, what Michael Reed has said, like calling them the emissary. Um, so this one is a star and it's, its emissary is the sun. So I figured I'd do it outside. It's pretty hot still and fall's coming before we know it. And I'm not one of those people who's really always crazy about fall or winter coming. I like the heat. So I figured I'd do it here in the sun. Okay, so probably the best... Uh, resource for to learn about this straight from the source would be the nakshatra sutras the the sutra from taitriya brahmana and it basically says like the concluding victories of uh all divine lords is superiorly conquering from above and complete victory from below so it's really just emphasizing all about conquering and victory um and you know, I really don't think there's that much like too mysterious to this nakshatra. I think it's pretty straightforward. That's why I wanted to talk about it. If you want things to, if you want to start something and make it grow in a way where it's like, where it's uh, victorious, where you're just like conquering, you're just, you know, you're firm and you're, uh, you're, you're just what you, if you want that thing to be like solid and desirable and uh, even kind of like give you recognition, get some fame from it. A victorious uh, action this is a good nakshatra to start with um, this is a good nakshatra to, to have the moon in you know to have planets in um, and uh, you can also see this because it's fixed and firm whereas the first one the purva shada is ugra is cruel and violent so that one is about, more about like that initial conflict this is more about coming out victorious of it and uh, becoming firm in that and being like fixed in that and it's also really interesting because all the Purva nakshatras are Ugra and Cruel and they're all ruled by Venus um, as the planetary emissary and they're all Ugra and Cruel and then all the Uttara nakshatras are all fixed and firm so it's kind of interesting um, and you know it's uh, yeah so again things you want to be you don't want to do this nakshatra on something that if you don't want the thing to become fixed, to become solid, become firm, you don't want to use this nakshatra. Um, it's a jiva nakshatra, so the uh, datu mula jiva thing, that's really, really important. And I've done a whole, uh, a couple videos on that. So look up uh, researching datu mula jiva nakshatras um, on my channel, and you'll find some really, really informative videos about that. Um, so the jiva uh in, in short, the Jiva Nakshatras are basically about submitting or dominating. This one is much more about dominating, usually, unless you have very afflicted planets there. If you have maybe debilitated Jupiter there, though, which can happen, that can make one actually submit to, uh, or if you, it's afflicted there, maybe a K2 there, you'll end up submitting to people you shouldn't. Uh, or you'll be following teachers you shouldn't follow who aren't worthwhile, you know, like a debilitated Jupiter type um, teacher. That's one thing you can see. But in general, it has more to do with that energy of dominating because it's ruled by the sun. So planets here like that are good with that will be good. So uh, definitely Mars because Mars is in Capricorn. So it'll be uh, exalted here as well. So when you see Mars exalted and in this nakshatra, that's a really conquering type of person. They're, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're going to use this nakshatra really healthy and really strongly. Um, 
so yeah, it has to do with, you know, winning, dominating, um, <clears throat> being victorious. Um, the previous one, Purva Nakshatra, is ruled by water, apa, like deified water. And what's interesting is that one is a downward direction, like how water just takes the path of least resistance and flows down. And that one also has to do with, um, like it says, Purvashada needs vigor from above to create an assembly or a battle below. So it's about assembling your forces more so, um, I feel. And uh, this nakshatra is more about, you know, pushing them out. It's symbolized with like an elephant tusk. You know, elephants are these things that are just unstoppable forces. When you really, when you think about elephant symbolism and uh, any kind of symbolism, it usually uh, conveys an idea of like an unstoppable, unstoppable force. You know, like Ganesh, the Lord of Obstacles, the remover of the obstacles. You know, um, I mean, have you ever seen any documentary like Nature Channels where the elephants just pummel down like a whole wall of jungle you know or they pump they just take down a fence you know or something so this next shot has that energy you know that's a good way to think of it that's maybe a good way to to kind of memorize this next shot is just like an elephant you know taking down a barrier um and it's sattvic just like how it's ruled by the sun so it's about um you know that purity following that inspiration of the sun um which is also upward moving, you know, like the, the sun is said to look up, sun and Mars are the planets that look up. Um, you know, they get their height, their most strength uh, in the 10th house in the sky. It also rules the thighs, the part of the body that's thighs, a really powerful part of the body that uses the most um, calories and has the most mass out of the body, but really does a lot of the labor. And um, what plants us, you know, what makes us firm, you know, it's, it's again something that's fixed and firm. Um, so yeah, you can see why. And then you know the deity is the um, is actually kind of interesting. It's like the Vishvadevas are the all divine lords. Like, um, and there's different ways you could actually interpret this. Um, so it can it can mean on one hand just this next chapter is about harnessing all divine energy. You see, but then it can also, and that's why there are so many successful people with this next chapter with Moon here or something. And I'll show you examples later. But then there's another thing about um, well, there actually are like these sets of the Vishvadeva. So you can like look those up, you know, like the sons of the God Dharma, I think. And there, you know, there's ones that represent like righteousness, fame, different, different great qualities. So, uh, if you wanted something that, you know, carries those qualities, this nakshatra is what you want. And that energy of like all the divine Lords and, you know, this kind of like superior, uh, superiorly conquering energy. Yeah. You can see why it's kind of like, uh, loose. And then also Vishvadevas is also kind of like, it's kind of like saying Vishnu too, because like Vishvadevas can be rooted in the word Vishnu and, um, Vishva means all everywhere, you know, just like Vishnu, the, the all, um, pervading everything. And so, um, it's kind of hinting at this nakshatra relating to Vishnu. And actually I think an old video, uh, Vic Dakara did explain that well, where he talked about how this star, then the next one, Danish, uh, Shravana, and then the next one, Danishta, ruled by the Vasus, all those deities can relate to Vishnu. Um, so that's just something to think about. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much everything that I had to share about uh, this nakshatra in terms of information. Um, and now I will share some examples. Yeah. Okay, so um, this is an example right here. Make sure I'm sharing this. Uh, yeah, so um, this is George Patton, okay? Huge conqueror, you know, like a huge military hero. Uh, he was in World War II. Um, you guys really might be surprised to know that George Patton was a very, very spiritual person. And you see his Atmakaraka is Jupiter. And he actually claims to have remembered many, many, many of his past lives. He, you, I'll share a link to a video that actually covered this on YouTube. I watched it at some point over the summer. It was kind of cool. Um, where he, he explained in his biography, like his memoirs, how he remembers serving under like Napoleon or under Alexander the Great. Basically, he claims he's reincarnated for many, many lives as a, as a soldier. You know what I mean? And doing... Uh, military work or you know uh, being a general being a warrior of some sort and he claims to remember these past lives 
Um, it's very possible because this his he's got the sun in the sixth house in Scorpio. Uh, Scorpio is the the sign of knowing the soul's journey throughout the world through the many lives. Um, he's got K two in Pisces, ma implying how really spiritual he was, but also the Lord of K two is with Rahu, and the, that means that K 2s agenda is more important to be worked out in this life than it's a lot of the Rahu stuff. And you know K 2s in Pisces, which is Pat, the past, you know what I mean? It's with Mars military. Virgo is a big sign of military service. Um, I really think it's quite possible that he really was being true, truthful about this, you know, or that he really did have some of these insights. Um, look at his eighth cusp. He's got two, two benefics in the eighth cusp. The eighth, the eighth house or the eighth cusp is to do with these, like I said, the soul's journey through the many lives. Look up, look it up in Parashra, you know? Um, the soul sojourn through the many lives is, is indicated under the eighth Baba. And he's got two benefics there. When there's benefics in a house, things just work out smoothly. You know, like you could just get these visions or have dreams, you know, the moon dreams. Um, I think it's quite possible, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're talking about his conquering military, like conquesting kind of attitude and being a general, being a huge conqueror. Look at that moon, the moon, See, the reason that they talk about like your moon nakshatra is because that's the moon's what you just do naturally, you know? And so if your moon's nakshatra, it's in, if you really want to know if that makes sense for you, if you think that's right or not, it's like, do you just naturally have that part of your personality that fits that? So, um, so yeah, moon and Atura Shada, he's, you know, his life was about war and being fixed and firm in that, you know? Um, so this one's pretty straightforward, I think. Big time conqueror. Here we go with another one. After I show these moon placements, I'll show you guys a couple examples of K2, because where K2 is in a nakshatra, it kind of shows that one can be really uptight about that energy. Um, and, you know, if they're not doing the Rahu thing, there can be troubles. But here we have George Washington's chart. George Washington also has the moon in Atarashada, and it's with the 10th cusp of, you know, being a mover and a shaker, being a leader, a powerful figure. So he was the first president of the United States, which has become a country that's basically like the Rome of the modern age, you know, like, um, so that's, that's pretty important karma to have, and he had that. Hmm. I didn't plan this, but also George Washington was an incredibly spiritual figure. Uh, a lot of people in the in his secret societies believe that he ascended. You know, uh, at the top of the Capitol building in Washington D.C., I actually took a field trip as a kid there and saw this, and I was really mesmerized by it. Is a huge mural on the very dome top of the Capitol. It's called the Apotheosis of George Washington. Literally, that means man becoming God. So his peers painted a painting of him becoming God and ascending to the state of God realization. It's a painting of him in heaven and with other people looking down. Uh, George Washington had a really strong uh, character. Um, look at, so, you know, with that being said, look at his chart. Tropically, his Atmakarika and his ruling planet is Venus, which is exalted in deep debilitate, deep, sorry, deep exaltation. Like that is a proud Venus and it's in the sign of Pisces of ascension um, and whenever it's there you always know that the, it's, it's also there in the Navamsha if it's in those last three degrees which is the that's the place for a spiritually enlightened soul um, when souls leave their body when Venus is at that uh, point you know this isn't about that this video is not about that so I don't want to spend too much time on it but that's a that's a, a key thing to look for if you are wanting to know about like yogis and ascending and all that stuff um, and look, Venus, he's a Pisces swamp ship with Venus there. Um, that's actually a placement John Minnie gives for uh, um, constant elevation, constant um, enlightenment, uh, perpetual dharma. He says, um, you know, I forget the exact sutra, but it's basically he says that if you have that, you know, you're someone who's going to be steadily spiritually progressing in this life. Um, so he was able to do that while at the same time still doing great military karmas and deeds. And we notice he also has a Mars Ruchaka yoga, a Mars uh, Mahapurusha yoga, so who's a great person in terms of war and being a warrior as well. So um, that 
you know, you always, I, I'm just such a, I'm an astrologer, so I'm going to, I can't help but synthesize things in the chart because that's what you want to be able to do, uh, to be able to do good astrology. But to focus back, moon, you know, so yeah, those are the things that are important, but the moon in Atarashada, he's a natural uh, winner. You know, he's a natural conqueror. He had the Vishvadeva energy behind him. You, you see? Um, this is kind of, this will be a fun one. Um, this is the chart of Rain Wilson, who is an actor, but he is best known for playing Dwight K. Schrute on The Office. Um, Dwight K. Schrute, if you've ever seen the show The Office, it's considered the number one television sitcom or whatever, ever to exist. And it's, I gotta say, rightly so. You know, I took, I was, I didn't watch it for a long time, but it actually is a very hilarious show and it's wholesome. It's not, you know, nothing I can really complain about with it. And I'm very critical of media and art. So um, it is a great show. And he plays a basically a, uh, a really uptight, like type A kind of like German, like Mennonite, like uh, live on the live. Out, uh, he lives in a farm on his own sort of lifestyle. Uh, he plays this kind of stereotype, uh, very emotionally like stoic, like never expresses a feeling or an emotion. Um, and that's moon in Capricorn. You see, that's that's that kind of quality. Capricorn is also the sign of, you know, just kind of day in and day out work. And he works in a, in a paper supply company. And he just like has this very mundane office job. But his whole, the whole point of him in the show, I won't go too much if, into it if you haven't seen the show, but he's like a super, uh, he's an extremely overly ambitious paper salesman. And he's just obsessed with becoming the manager of Dunder Mifflin, the paper company. And so uh, he, you know, like he, he tries so hard to get that, that he sabotages himself most of the time. Um, and he's just obsessed with like being, you know, victorious, conquering that kind of Jiva, like dominating, you know, energy. So those of you who've watched that show, you can kind of remember, oh yeah, Dwight has a moon in Atura Shada. That can help you remember this, this star. Um, Here we go with the chart of Rob Lowe. Rob Lowe is a huge actor um, and he's really, really famous. He's been in Wayne's World. He's been in the show Parks and Recreation, also written by the guys from The Office. Um, he's uh, very well known and he's, um, he's a very just like type A, like kind of like considered like a very, like the perfect handsome man, you know, um, kind of very alpha. Um, so, and he's like, you know, obsessed with fitness and his health. And he also plays a character like that in Parks and Recreation stuff. And he's one of these guys who's done, who's, you can tell has worked really, really hard to get where he's at. And um, like, very, very competitive, very, very much um, an alpha type of person, a type A type of person, um, obsessed with winning and and can't stand to lose you know that sort of person if you read about his personal life and also the characters he plays and as i say so much you have to go back and watch the other videos on acting and actors and stuff i've done on that so i won't spend too much time on this but an actor can only play a role that is in his karma to play so me reading the chart of the actor is reading the chart of their character um as well so this is also what i'm saying relates to chris traeger if you've ever seen that show parks and recreation okay so uh, moving on to another one, Brad Pitt and Matt Damon. Both of these guys, um, get to Matt Damon in a second. Brad Pitt, all right, Moon and Atarashada again, huge. See, this is the thing is like Rob Lowe, Brad Pitt, Matt Damon. This is like, gosh, that's like 50% of all the superheroes in all, you know what I mean? Of all the movies of The Martian, you know, this, that. They're all, uh, you know, these a few of these guys play all these roles, you know, um, Johnny Depp has K2 here, you know, so it's like, it's just really funny that if you have that moon there, you're naturally a hero, a warrior of su superiorly conquering. So those people keep gravitating to these roles where they're heroes, you know what I mean? Um, playing these roles over and over and over again. If you think about it, that has to be a special karma that you're given. Um, and again, the deity of this nakshatra, the Vishvadevas, one of those is fame, you know? Um, that doesn't explain why he's so famous, though. Go and watch my video on Argala examples um, to learn more about Brad Pitt's chart. I've already talked about his in 
other videos. Matt Damon. Matt Damon, another super, you know, he, he, he made himself famous. He's not one of these guys who just grew up in like a fancy family and, um, you know what I mean? And just was a Coppola and could just go and be, <laughs> be a famous Hollywood star without trying. This guy, he was nothing and he wrote his own film, Good Will Hunting, and made it and produced, you know, he, he, he made Good Will Hunting happen and it is a brilliant story and a brilliant film. And um, in that he plays a very self-made character no doubt also due to Mars and K2. But yeah, we see that the moon is in Uttara Shada again. So he's just a winner, you know, he's victorious. He just wants to conquer. He's going to keep going, keep doing the push-ups. If he needs to be buff for that role, he's not going to just stop. You know what I mean? If he needs to lose weight for role, he will lose it. If he needs to grow a beard, he grows it. You know, um, <sighs> might sound too simple, but it's like, that's how you become successful. You know, he, <laughs> this is not the next shot of complaining and sitting around, you know? Um, so yeah, so those are all good examples of Moon there and how those people are naturally just all about uh, conquest and winning and removing obstacles. Um, I don't actually have a lot of other normal people with this placement in my database. And I think that's because if you have this placement, you're not going to be as inclined to get an astrologer's help because you want to just keep going through it. And whether that works for you or not would have to do with the rest of the chart. Um, here's someone that it didn't really work too well for, Adolf Hitler. He had K2 there. He had it with a debilitated Jupiter. So you see, he wanted to be followed. He wanted to be that guru, that figure, but it was debilitated. And like I said, when there's afflictions here with this nakshatra, K2, one of the best ways to afflict it, especially when K2 is acting like a debilitated Jupiter, then the you're going to have that jiva quality more of submitting or following someone that you shouldn't follow. So it's not worth following. Um, so it's kind of interesting that Hitler has that. And then, um, you know, Jupiter K2 can be a major placement for people that cause a lot of bad in the world, even though they think they're causing good or are trying to cause good. I'm not saying if you have that, that's what you're doing, but um, it can be a placement that makes one so uptight about their beliefs and their idea and philosophy of the world that they just cause a lot of problems wherever they go because they're the gods are trying you know life's trying to make them not be that way and so if they keep ha hanging on to that they can they can experience pain so hitler um that was sort of a failed atara shada whitney houston is also an example of um a sort of sort of failed one too it's not as bad because the lord is strong as saturn but she had a lot of she got in a lot of trouble just through things she said she said some very uh you know inappropriate things and i won't go into it all there but you know like she was doing fine and then she had a major kind of fall from her in her career and stuff and um uh could be classified as being a little too pushy with regards to um her power and her status and what she could do with that um so, yeah, so she is not someone who's been able to remain fixed and firm as a famous person steadily ascending upward, like some of these other charts. Um, and that, that K2 there has been blocking that unless she works out Rahu in Cancer, which I don't know, you know, but anyway, so that's, that's that. <sighs> all right, so that's pretty much all the examples I had to give. Um, and I hope that this helps you guys really understand this nakshatra. So, so far I've only done, I've only covered Ardra and Uttara Ashada, but I will continue to cover these, you know, as I feel inspired to. I'm not gonna rush too much on any of these.